for you. It is 745 and we've got Julia Hanschel for Lockerbie Radio Show. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm brilliant. How's everybody this morning? I think they're excellent. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is a time of year when all the third form kids and their parents get slips of paper from school. Because it's CXC choice time. What are you going to do for CXC? So you're in form three, you're entering form four, you're choosing your CXC subjects, but it's not just a matter of what you enjoy. And it's really not just a matter of what you're good at. If only it was that simple, and I'm going to tell you why. What problems do you think you want to solve in the world? So it's about your interests. And hopefully kids have got some idea of what interests them. Do animals interest you? Do the outdoors interest you? Um, let's not think about does gaming interest you. Gaming interests everyone. It's like my generation. Reading interested everyone. But we all weren't going to become librarians. So it's about what are those other things that really interest you, that you, you have these wonderful feelings of joy with. Because it's about what problems do you want to solve in the world? In the year 2040 and beyond, which is the world in which the children now going into third form, fourth form, will actually have their, you know, their jobs, their careers. If they don't make an active, knowledgeable, informed choice as to what direction they want to go in, they're going to be a bunch of do-nothingers because that's actually going to be a profession and it's going to be a state-sponsored profession. Do you know that there, I, I don't, an experiment is being done, I don't know if it's Sweden or, or somewhere in Scandinavia or whatever, in which they're looking at paying um, young people to stay home and not enter the job market. I think it's 700 euros a month so that they are their career is a do-nothing. They're, do, they're literally retired at the age of 17 when they leave school. So it's going to be a very, very different world. So this show is being presented on the premise that those of you listening want more for your child than morning to night do nothing. And that you kids who are listening actually want a job that you can sink your teeth into. So let's start with what the theoretical physicists have postulated. And that is that the kids who are now in Form 3, choosing their CX subjects, are going to have to retrench, retrain, and retool themselves for a different job 14 times on average in their adult working lives. So the days of you entering a job um, when you're 18, maybe changing at 25, and staying in that second job until you retire at 65, they're gone. 14 times on average is where you're going to change, not just within the same industry, but jump between industries. Now, that's a lesson in human adaptability. And that adaptability is built on the foundation of the subjects that you're about to choose now. So third form subject meeting um, meetings are coming up. And parents and their kids have to be ready to make a decision that they're going to have to use as a foundation for an evolving, mutating and somewhat surprising career, the extent of which you cannot even begin to fathom. The Human Development Index is moving very, very swiftly. Do not make choices based on traditional um, careers of law or medicine or whatever. I'll go into that in a little while. Hopefully I have time. From what I've read about jobs of the future, their future, which is 15 to 20 years off, these kids who are now entering Form 4, here's my take as a teacher of the value of subjects at school because choosing a subject you're good at, well, math you can't choose. You've got to be good at math if you're going to do math. But choosing a subject you're good at has to be scaffolded by subjects that your child may not automatically gravitate towards, but which are needed to build the foundation of a wider career choice. A wider career choice. Think about how Spanish may plug into physics. Think about how food and nutrition may plug into geography. Think about how art may plug into math. That kind of choice or art plug into to physics. Things like English literature and history, to me, I would abolish English language. And I would teach English language through literature and through history. 
because literature and history are the great critical thinking subjects. It's those that take you deep and you have higher order thinking stimulation. Maths, not just the new additional math of the all the cosine tangent formula, integrated whatevers. Sorry, I'm not a math person. Not just that math, but the math of computation and logic and analytics and inquiry and calculation based math, the conceptual understanding, because you know what aspect um, of life, even now, but very much so in the future, math is going to govern the collection and analysis of data. Physics, really important, not just because physics is the, the knowledge of, of how everything works, but because physics teaches you to be a creative problem solver and physics is 80% math. Geography, super important subject. Do not discount it. People, environments, cause and effect, human and social responses, societies, laws, natural, natural happenings and occurrences, astrophysics and all this kind of thing are all tied up into geography, as is satellites and communications and technology and all this kind of thing. Business, art and psychology. Do not underestimate the power of business, of art and psychology because they give you a foundation of knowledge, intellectualism at the very highest level that helps you not just figure out but understand enough so that you can figure out. And if I could be Minister of Education and and demand that it be taught in every school from the age of five to the age of 18, I would insist on teaching coding. Coding is going to rule the world, everyone. So what do you do? Your child's in form three and they're about to enter form four. You Google. You Google for hours. Hours. You Google together. You Google apart. You discuss at dinner. You discuss in the car. You discuss on weekends. You discuss in the evenings. You find the time to sit down and you talk and you Google and you Google and you talk. You may not have to dream big, but you do have to dream differently for the world that's coming. And your child needs to realize that working in a store is no longer a fallback. Stores will be places and already have begun to be in big countries, not places where you purchase but places where you go and experience. There are computer stores, I don't know if it's Apple or whatever, in some big countries where you go to experience the forest, literally the forest that is inside the store. And there are a few little things for you to look at, but you're buying them online, you're not buying them there. Believe it or not, Amazon will take over the retail world or organizations like Amazon. Your need, your want, or your wish will come to your door, it'll be packed by robots, tracked by computers, and delivered by drones or some other intelligent machine. It's already begun. So if you think, oh, I'm not doing well at school, you know, I'm going to go and work in a hardware store, I'm going to go and work whatever. No. Stores are going to be places of experience, like malls. They're not going to be places where you purchase. So the years, the year that you're going to be preparing now for with your choices very different world. Pragmatically, what do you do right now? You research, as I have, and then you work backwards. X really interests me, or X, Y, and Z really interests me. Okay, to do X, what am I going to need? Am I going to need a certificate? Am I going to need a diploma? Am I going to need a degree? Am I going to need an internship? Am I going to... You know, what was it called when you worked under people? Like artisans. What like an internship in or... Like an internship, yeah. but, you know, um, um, with your hands. They were, they were yeah, I, you, I can't remember artisans. the words. Sorry. Art, yeah. yeah. So you have to look at what it is. Now, my research tells me, oh my gosh, degrees. Degrees are going out the wazoo. And they're going to be far more um, attainable simply because you can be able to get your degree online. What we scoff at now as an online degree is going to become the norm. Because the projections are that 65% of the world's universities by the year 2050 are going to be out of business. Because the good universities are going to be offering online courses. And the super duper duper, you know, Harvards and Yales and Stanfords and Cambridge and that kind of thing. You're going to have to pay a fortune to actually go and be taught by a real person. Yeah. So education is going to change. So you need to know what you need to have to fulfill your interest in X. 
Now, if it's a degree, a certificate, a diploma or whatever, and you can find that out online now, what do you need to get entry onto that program? Now, that's going to be higher level learning. It's going to be Cambridge A-levels. It's going to be um, a grade 12 GPA of whatever. It's going to be Kate. It's going to be an associate degree. It's going to be something to get onto that higher level. But to get onto that CAPE or A-level or associate degree, you're going to need CXEs or O-levels to, to, to jump on. So you have to work backwards. For example, if you don't do biology or chemistry at CXC, you can't do it higher up. And if you can't do it higher up, you can't do it higher up than that. And if you can't do it higher up than that, you better not want it in your career. So you have to really start with looking at what area interests you and work backwards. And unfortunately, that means that you don't have a lot of time to sit down on Google and talk and research because what you choose now is going to impact your entire life. You will be surprised when you do that research how open your child needs to keep his or her options. That's why at Lockerbie College, we have open choices. Children don't get streamed. They don't have to choose between physics and history. I mean, how could you choose? You don't have to choose between geography and Spanish. How could you choose? You don't have to choose between chemistry and biology. How can you choose? You know, or let's do all the sciences and forget that business exists. You know, how can you choose? These are not the days and times we're living in when you should be making those streamed choices. And the schools, they should not be choosing for you and saying that your child is a little dimwit in some subject and they want their statistics and therefore they're not putting your child in X class. Suppose your child needs that for his life. Somehow, that school is obligated to help your child get it, yeah? So, when you begin to hear what the future needs and is looking for, you'll quickly realize education is an investment you can't afford not to make. It's time to think of value, not expense. Because the shops, the offices, and the stores your child can accept as a fallback, as a default option for a fair living in 2018 is not going to exist in 2030 going to be replaced by intelligent machines which children need to be able to design, operate, fix, sell, etc. And systems. And systems. Education has never been more important than it is right now. Never before has it had the potential to divide. To divide. You would think it would have the potential to unite, right? It has the potential to divide. Those who do from those who don't. Those who have from those who haven't. Those who want from those who will just settle. Yeah? It's going to divide the success stories from the rest. Its skills have never before been as important and as specialized and required as they are today. And those skills are what drive higher learning. So what I'm going to do is next week, I'm going to continue this talk and I'm going to let you know about the jobs, for example, in healthcare. You will be amazed. Robotic surgeries. Um... Oh gosh, cryopreservation. Let's not talk about engineering and the different kinds of engineering. So your kids have to sort of look generically at things, look very, very big picture. Use this week to do some really solid research. Your kids want to be online? Give them an opportunity to be online. They want to be online 24-7? Let them be online 24-7. But make sure they're researching their lives, not just playing games and entertaining themselves. Or they'll be the do-nothingers who are given a few little dollars every month to sit home and be retired at age 17. Get going, everybody. Really exciting, exciting times. And next week, I'll be back and I'll help you with those third form choices. Thanks for listening.